After years and years of searching for the perfect outdoors and hunting radio, I finally found it. But if I use it, I'll be a criminal. Last summer, I was looking for some uh, new hunting radios, ones that would be compatible with USB charging. And I wanted these specific radios so I could actually take the charging cord with me out into the field and if need be, recharge my radio using my 4Patriots power cell. Because I thought these new Midlands would operate just like my old Midlands did, but nothing could be further from the truth. So I got to looking around at even more radios and their features during this time period last summer. And that's when I came across the little bow thing. When I say little, I mean they are tiny, very tiny. This radio is actually smaller than my new Midland X-Talkers and quite a bit smaller than my old Midland GXT 650s. So these are a dual band UHF VHF ham radio, which with you can program in any frequency that it will take. And that's quite a few. And I noticed this little Baofeng UV5RTP, which stands for tri-power, had another intriguing feature. I could switch the power settings from 1 watt to 4 watts to 8 watts. Now FRS stands for Family Radio Service, and GMRS stands for General Mobile Radio Service. And if you've ever bought a blister pack of little walkie-talkies, you have either an FRS or a new modern day combined FRS GMRS radio. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to the GMRS FRS MERS channels thing in a few minutes. Let's take a look at the radio and what we got for 70 bucks. The first thing you'll notice is this is a set, do not separate. That's because when I bought this, I bought them together as a set. Obviously I wanted two radios, two of everything, but this set package came with a programming cable and that's what I was really after. You get the Baofeng owner's manual. This is an earpiece set, I believe. I never use these, but it's nice to have them. The radio chassis, rechargeable battery, and you really want to get one of these. Look for the radio deal and uh, get it included in your order if you can, or you can just order them separately. Get a hand mic, an antenna for your radio, a charging unit, a wrist strap, and these little belt clips, which I'm probably gonna install on both radios. Okay, let's start with the whole FRS, GMRS, MURS thing. These are designations from the FCC, Federal Communications Commission, and, and they're the ones that have all the say over family radio service, general mobile radio service, and multi-use radio service, also known as MERS. Here, if you've ever owned one of these radios, packaged little walkie-talkies, you have probably already broken the law. Yes, that's right, you are a scoff law. GMRS radio frequencies require a license from the FCC, I think it's $70 now, good for 10 years, no test, you just apply and get it. FRS radios, family radio service, are very low power now and require no license from the FCC. What the FCC has mandated in the last couple of years, since 2017, is that FRS, GMRS be combined. So on my old Midland, uh, you probably can't see it, but I'm on channel one, FRS, and it says hi. On the new FRS radios as of 2017, channel one is designated as two watts. In fact, channels one through seven are all two watts. Channels eight through 14 are half a watt. And channels 15 through 22 are also GMRS channels, and they're up to 50 watts now. Five watts is decent power, and these always work great. In fact, I can show you the furthest distance I've ever talked on these. It was basically top of that clear cut up there down to the house here talking to my wife. It's about 11 miles as the crow flies. So although I was thrilled that I could have this little X-Talker with me out there and my 4Patriot solar charger 
and never ever have a dead battery. The fact I'm only getting two watts out of this, it's not good. Here's what makes this illegal to use as an FRS radio. It has a detachable antenna. Can't have that. You're able to program in separate frequencies. Can't have that. And you're able to switch power settings either above or below the range that the FCC has so graciously given to us as the family radio service. One half of a watt. I'm sorry, that just doesn't work for me. Okay, let's take a peek at how I have my Baofeng's programmed. You're going to want to search the internet for some software called Chirp, C-H-I-R-P, and download it. You can take your programming cable that you purchased with your radios, stick it in there, and here's where I ran into a problem for about two days. I thought I had uh, some defective radios or something. I could not get the programming to work. But here's how you do it. You need to insert this plug very carefully, kind of get it going, and then press it evenly till you hear it and feel it snap. There, that's in. If you don't make a good connection, you won't communicate with the software. Okay, we're plugged in. Turn the radio on, the volume all the way up, maybe down just a little bit. Then what you do is you actually download the memory of the radio into the software program. That allows you to look at it, make any changes that you might want to make, and then reload it up into the radio. Okay, there's the instructions again. And it is cloning. There it goes, and there's my radio. At the uh, zero marker, I don't even know why I have a zero channel. I have nothing. And on channel one, it says 462.562, it's UHF. And I've named the channel by using the software. The software allows you to also type in a name in addition to the frequency and the uh, number of the channel. This is number one FRGMR. And I'm calling it FRGMR for family radio general mobile radio services because they're combined all 22 of them and then down here i have what's called the mers channels mobile universal radio service and there are five of these channels and these are vhf 151 8200 to 154 6000 so the reason i wanted to get all of the frs gmrs frequencies in one radio is because 99 percent of the people you run into out in the hills hunting or fishing are using GMRS or FRS. Channel mode. All I have to do is be able to scan all of those channels. Scanning begin. Then I would just wait until we get an active signal, kind of like this. I'd lock on that, and then I would try transmitting and see if I got anybody to answer me back. And even if I didn't get anybody to answer me back, I would still transmit, and I would also transmit my GPS coordinates at that time. So yes, the UV5RTP does scan, but the problem I have is I can't lock out certain channels that I don't want to necessarily scan because they're always landing hot and I'm getting all that uh, traffic. There is a provision in the Chirp software right here. It says skip, and that's supposed to allow you to lock out certain channels of your scan sequence. And I haven't been able to do that yet. So here's what I've done instead. The back of the radio, I put a little uh, label with a weather frequency, 162, 4000 to 5500, and national call frequencies, 146, 5200, and 446, 000. Those two frequencies are ham frequencies that are always monitored in certain areas of the country. Okay, weather, 162, 4000. If I was to program this into the radio to scan, it would always be stopping. Frequency mode. Okay, I'm in frequency mode. I'm going to type in 162, 4000. And there's the weather radio. Northwest wind 5 to 
to 10 miles an hour. And one more thing. If you also order a Nagoya NA24J antenna, like this one here, you'll turn your little bow thing into a transmitting powerhouse. This antenna, depending on the terrain you're transmitting in, will probably give you at least twice the range as this factory antenna right here. And when you're not using this Nagoya, it's very easily stored in your pack. Simply wrap it around once, put the tip through here and make a loop, and stick it in your pack. You'll never even know it's there. Anyhow, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to hunt hard, and I'm going to hunt smart. And carry a throw down radio, in case I have to transmit on GMRS. Hey, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I got one down. All right, just leave your radio on. I'll leave mine on. I'm going to walk up the road a little bit and see if I can remember where you went up. There's no way you can drive in there, huh?